Just a quick video on Newton's third law of motion. Uh, it's probably a law that you guys are familiar with, but uh, I want to explore it just a minute if I could. Um, you probably know it as saying, for every force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. And that's true, but I feel like that definition sort of leaves a little bit out. And so I want to just kind of make sure that you get it. Um, so let's imagine we have two billiards balls, right? One eight and a two. And the two happens to be at rest and the eight is moving towards it. It's rolling towards the two. Uh, and since this one's at rest, you know they're gonna collide. And so what's going to end up happening is the uh, eight ball is going to give a push to the two ball, okay? So typically what happens in this scenario is that the two ball continues to move this way and the eight ball stops. And the question is, why does the eight ball stop? And the answer actually has its roots in Newton's third law of motion which, if we're being honest, I think is the most useful of all the three laws of motion because it's the one that actually helps you apply these concepts to the real world. This is how things actually move or why they actually move. Um, but it may not be obvious from the definition here. So let's take a look at it. So as the ball, eight ball is rolling along, uh, it then contacts the two ball. And as a result, it applies a force in that direction. And uh, we're going to call, instead of the eight ball and the two ball, I'm just going to say object A and object B, as it's written here. Um, so object A applies a force to object B. And so the way that I'm going to write that, I'm going to write it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it, um, is F sub AB. It's the force that A exerts on B. And so it applies a force to it. Now, uh, the problem with this is that the, the two ball doesn't want to move. It has inertia, right? So it stays stationary um, for as long as it can until there's this extra force that comes along. And so as a result, it doesn't want to move. And so it has to be pushed into moving or changing its motion. And in this case, the eight ball is doing the pushing. And so this is what we call an action force. It's the reason why there is a force pair happening in the first place, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So it's an action force, okay? Now, as I said, the two ball doesn't want to go, so object B resists a change in its motion. As a result, it applies a force back onto object A or the eight ball. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw out a force like this. And this is going to be the force that B applies on A, like so. And so the question was, why does the eight ball stop when the two ball continues to move? The answer is that when a, uh, object A applies a force to B, we call that the action force, B must apply an opposite but equal reaction force to A. And so this is our reaction force here. There wouldn't be a force from the, the two ball to the eight ball if there wasn't already a force from the eight ball back on the two ball. And so we have to be careful about that. So when this says for every force there's an equal but opposite reaction force, it misses one crucial thing, one crucial piece, and that is the two objects that these forces act on are always different. It never, the action and reaction forces never act on the same object. So uh, for example, when I jump, I push down on the earth, the earth pushes back up on me, and that's why I go up into the air. Technically, the earth actually moves away from me a little bit too, but it would never be something that we could actually measure because my force is so small that I apply to the earth, and the earth's mass is very large. My mass is about 10 to the second kilograms, the earth's is about 10 to the 24th kilograms. So you can see it has a lot more inertia, so it doesn't move very much when I apply my tiny little force to it. But that said, there is always a, a force and a reaction force. They go in pairs, and so we have this thing called a force pair. Force pair, or sometimes a complete interaction. And that is Newton's third law of motion. Every interaction is, has to be complete in that it has to include both a uh, action and reaction force. And if it doesn't, then you're missing something and you don't really understand what's happening in the situation. So when eight 
gives motion to two, the two ball gives you know, takes away the motion from eight. And so you're going to see as we go forward that this is going to translate into the conservation of momentum next week. Thanks for watching.